we are going to start the chapter history of english language why you want to study history of english language only there are two reasons basically english has becoming important day by day with the expansion of computer with the expansion of modern gadgets the role of english is much more pronounced in the present world and the second thing is that english is having a very vast and interesting history also because growth of any language depends on so many factors and i'm taking one example of the english language because it is having so many interesting facts so we want to study history of english language here are two points i want to make it very clear regarding this english language that english is a member of the germanic language family germanic it is a germanic language family and germanic is from the family of indo european language indo european language now the question happens that how english is from the germanic language family and how it is a part of the indo european family in fact germanic language means influence of german is there and how it is a part of the indo european family then we have to trace back it is history long back i have to go to the 55th century bc uh, century bc if we trace the history of england then at that time julius caesar julius caesar the great caesar uh, he invaded britain and he captured britain in fact the julius caesar you might have seen the photograph or picture a statues of julius caesar that he was a great roman empire who who converted the roman republic to a to an empire and he was a great uh, writer also and uh, in 15 55 century bc before christ he invaded england and his influence was there till 450 years approximately why i am telling that up to the 450 ad because in 449 the germanic tribes the germanic tribes they invaded great britain the four and at the 449 ad the main from the 55 century bc to up to 400 50 AD there was influence of roman lit roman language in britain at that time the local people were reading a, a, were speaking a language that was very unique it was the celtic c e l t i s h in fact it will, you will be amazed to know that the growth of english traced back only to in the present form i am telling 1400 AD only or at the, the most at the 1600 AD only when at the time of william shakespeare this was the modern english page means the present english the english which we spoken earlier it was in such a bizarre form that if you will listen that english you will not be able to understand it but so the if the growth of english is so recent 1600 ad then what was before that i was explaining you that in 449 as i was telling you 449 ad germanic tribes they invaded england and before that this was the language was celtic now let us read this very relevant paragraph from the literature it is written that the history of english language really started with the arrival of the three germanic tribes about which i was telling that in the 450 ad who invaded britain during 5th century ad at what time in the 5th century ad in 450 these tribes the angles uh, the saxons and the jutes these three tribes at this place you no know, part of the germany saxons angles and jutes they, they crossed the north sea they, they crossed the north sea german germanic invasion of the 5th century ad these tribes They crossed the sea and what they today they see the Denmark or North Germany. At that time, the inhabitants of Britain spoke a Celtic language. Sorry, Celtic language. But most of the Celtic speakers were pushed west. It just this is a part of the Great Britain. Here, this is the England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. 
Now after the invasion they put to the west. This part they had gone. Okay. And the angles come from the Ingla land and their language was known as English. Okay. The English, this one, the angles, angles, they have come from the place, the words. Just see the angles came from Ingla land and their language was called Englishic from which the word England and English were derived. So the modern England, it is having its origin from the such type of invasion in which the English they crossed the North Sea and they formed, they had their influence there and so their influence was there. That's why when I made the statement, the statement was very apt, very that, this is a statement that Germanic language family. So now it is clear that in 450 AD there was Germanic influence on the English language. Okay, this is the part of the old history. Now after 452, almost 4, 1000 AD, this was the old English page. Earlier it was the Celtic page. Now it was the old English. Okay, just let us read again the paragraph from there only. Now from the influence of the Celtic language, now we come to the second phase. That phase is 450 to 1100 AD. Here again we, I, I, I must emphasize that the English spoken at that time was so different that if you will read it, you will not able to comprehend whatever has been told. The, here it is written that the invadic Germanic tribes spoke similar languages which in Britain developed into what we now call Old English. Okay, Some of the words of the Germanic tribes, that's why it is from the Germanic family, the Old English did not sound or look like English today. Native English speakers now would have great difficulty in understanding Old English. Means it we are having great difficulty in understanding the old English. Nevertheless, about half of the most commonly used words in modern English have old English roots. Okay, means half of the vocab are coming from the old English roots, like the words be, strong, water. These are some of the examples which derive from the old English. Old English was spoken up to 1100 AD. Means the language was not that much pronounced at that time. In fact, regarding language, I must emphasize one thing that any language becomes rich only when they are having maximum number of words in that because words are the coin which make the language richer and by richer. Now, this is the from the old English, the phase comes for the middle English. Okay, in the middle English, that portion is very important that in 1066. William the Conqueror, the Duke of Normandy. Okay, the Normandy. Normandy is where it is a part of France, modern France. Now the influence of which country was there? That two influence, Roman influence, then Germanic influence. Now it now it is the influence of the France, Normandy. They invaded and conquered England. The new conquerors, they are the Normans, brought with them a kind of French, which became the language of the royal court. So, in the royal court, the language which was being spoken, it was not English. It was something like French, a kind of French. And the ruling and business people were, were speaking only the Roman language, the Normandic language. So, in the England also, the French or the Normandic language was being spoken up to 1500 from the 1066 to that period because in the court and in the British royal court, the ruling and business classes, they were speaking this Normandic language. For a period there was a kind of linguistic class division and where the lower classes spoke English. Very interesting. The lower classes were speaking English and the upper classes spoke French. That was the period. Like in India, the same thing. The lower class speak Hindi original language, but the upper class speak English. So this was the influence. Up to the 14th century, English become dominant in Britain again. But in the latter half of the 14th or 15th century, it was like that, that many of the French words though they were ended, but this was the middle phase of the English. It was the language of the great word Saucer. No? But, but it, is, it is still very difficult for the native English speakers to understand them today.
Now we just see the part example of whatever has been written by the Middle English by the Chaucer. And when I swash the old day never find do the dame in the cruiser's books at night, and suddenly three leaves have I plight out of the books right. You don't comprehend, you just read it. And you will not be able to comprehend whatever has what is written here. Now we come to the next phase, that is the modern English. Just come, just come and see what is modern English. Now in the modern English phase, that was the 1500 to 1800, that is early modern English phase rather, the towards the end of the Middle English, a sudden and distinct change in pronunciation, that the great vowel shift, means vowel has come. Now you just see that towards the middle of the end of the Middle English, that is 1500, a sudden and distinct change of pronunciation, the great vowel shift, now vowel has come, no? It started A E I O U vowel shift and with vowels beginning pronounced shorter and shorter from the 16th century, the British had come in contact with many people from around the world. Now this was the period of Renaissance. In the Renaissance, let me emphasize a little bit regarding the Renaissance. What does it mean by Renaissance? Okay, what I was emphasizing. That Renaissance was a period which started somewhere around 1400 AD. What happened if you see the map of the world, you will find that this is the Great Britain, this is the Europe, Portugal, this is Portugal, Spain, France, Germany, Italy. Then this place is Turkey. No, this place is Turkey. Here you will find there is a Black Sea no? or Caspian Sea. At this place, the road was blocked by the Ottoman Empire. As the road was blocked, so the people have to come all the way from the very cold part of the Russia. It was not difficult for the Europeans to come through this route because the road was blocked by the Ottoman Empire, which was uh, which was who was a Muslim ruler. <coughs> this European part, this was blocked, and they <coughs> and. For coming to the other part of the world, like if they have to come, this, is, this was the Africa, Madagascar, for coming to the other part of the world, like this is India, he, they have to come all the way from this way, and they have to come here, Madagascar or this way. So, Vasco de Gama came in that way, from that way, it was the 1498, because Ferdinand Magellan, he has told that, no, earth, the globe, the, the earth is like a globe, it is like a round, like a ball, and a person can go to this place, it's not flat. So, there was a sea voyage. This, the period of Renaissance, it brought the technological change, and technological change change and it brought lot of changes in the field of humanism and it was there the period when the art, literature, uh, literature, painting, music, etc. they all came in place, places and the people were having contact with the other part of the world because there was a trade. With the change in technological change, there was a huge production and people were having contact with the other part of the world. This was the period of Renaissance. So, Renaissance was a period when the growth of English language took place up to the maximum extent. The, so, the people from the sea voyages, the people were having contact with the different parts of the world and they were having different type of vocabulary and the different type of words they were coming and interacting with those type of words they were being used in the English so that the vocab of English was becoming very strong. So this was the uh, modern page. Okay. So now let us read the text that the Renaissance of classical learning means that many new words and phrases entered the language. That what I was telling. That is being qualified here. The invention of the printing. Yeah, that is very important. Printing was there. No, this part. This part is very important. The printing. The invention of printing, you know, perhaps in 1476, no, also meant there was a now a common language in print. Books became cheaper, so there was more expansion and more people learned to read. Printing also brought a standardization to English. The spelling and grammar became fixed because the printing, no, and the dialect of London, which was most published houses, were become the standard. In 1604, the first English dictionary were pub was published. 
So what is happening with the growth of this printing technology? There are so many dialects in England, but those dialects now becoming unified. It usually happens when there was no printing, no communication, that there are so many dialects developed in other parts, other regions. And if there is expansion, then people communicate with each other, then the dialects become a common dialect, no? So this was there. The main difference now, we are coming to the late modern English. In the late modern English, such barriers were broken, no? The main difference between early modern English and late modern English is the vocab. Vocabulary. Late modern English has many words arising from two principal factors. Firstly, industrial revolutions. What I was telling about Renaissance, industrial revolutions. Technology. They created a need for new words. Secondly, the British Empire at its height covered one quarter of the earth's surface. No, they have colony. The mercantilism. The East India Company or other company, they had gone to the other parts of the world and they formed a new company. And they came in contact with the with the people from the different cultural background and different languages were being incorporated. Different words were incorporated. Now the situation is like that. Even in England, in even the English dictionary, you will find the words so many words from the India. There is a dictionary which is having the Indian words in English being used in their way. No, so the English language adopted foreign words from many countries. So this was the effect. So this is a variety of English that from around 1600, the colonization, the mercantilism, that North America came in where the first colony, creation of a distinct American variety of English. Now the English is having distinct American variety. Now after, from the dialect it has become common. Now there are these different variety. English is evolving in different parts of the world in different way. So some English pronunciation and words prose what they reached in America and some way, means there was different type of connotations have come in the English. Now English is becoming richer and richer. The American English is more like the English of Shakespeare than modern English, modern modern British English. Is. Some expressions the British call Amer Americanism. In fact, original British expressions. Uh, that we are preserved the colonies while most of the time in Britain there are so many words you will find there. Today American English is particularly influential due to the USA domination of cinema, television, popular music, trade and technology. But there are so many other countries, no? Like the Australian, New Zealand, Canadian English, South African English, Indian English, Caribbean English, no? There are different types of English. So now we can say that English is a Germanic family of language and it is having the different type of connotations and this is the in a nutshell the brief chronology of English where we will find I, I must emphasize at one point that here William Shakespeare was born in 1564 and this period no? 64 and one more period 1476 English printing press you no know, this is very important phase second is the William Shakespeare you no know. this way the English become richer and richer richer and in 1928 the Oxford English dictionary was published that is the modern English the modern English means new dictionary Webster publishes the American English dictionary British Broadcasting Corporation is founded the Oxford English Dictionary is published. These are the salient landmarks of the late, late modern English. Before that, it was the Shakespearean age and the influence of USA also to some extent on Britain or British influence on the USA. Because in 1783, when the British, Britain abandons its colonies, what is later known to be as USA. That was the phase from which the American English came in practice.